YouTube, Craig here, and I am in the middle of a massive interior restoration on my 93 LE, but I have finished my seats, so I'm going to show you how I, I did these. I reskinned them myself. They are very nice compared to my uh, original LE leather there. As you can see, they were pretty well fucked. Um, but including the price of these new skins and all the tools and materials I needed to reskin them, I am into this project for less than 300 bucks. So that is less than the price of a crappy set of eBay seats. I have a very nice restored and reskinned my factory seats. So I'm going to show you how I did that. All right, so this is a, a four. This is my driver's seat from my LE Miata. Um, pretty, pretty bad shape. Um, the bolsters on this side especially, it's common to see these bolsters pretty dilapidated. The leather is uh, in horrible shape. I mean, you can just tear it like cardboard. So here is an after picture of my seats. I think they turned out very nice, and I got these at www.interior-innovations.com. I will put a link down in the description. 225 bucks shipped for these covers. Uh, they also offer custom embroidery for a $25 charge. Um, these are not genuine leather. Um, I'm doing a huge interior renovation, and I had to budget my money, so leather just wasn't in the cards for me. But I am very happy with the quality of these seat covers, and I can't wait to get them in the car. So, before we get started, I'll give you a quick overview of all the tools I used. Uh, to disassemble the seats, you'll need a 12 and 14 millimeter socket or wrench, as long as the Phillips head screwdriver. You're going to want some needle nose pliers, um, some small snips, and you want some big metal snips. These are for cutting out the hog rings. A uh, nice pair of scissors, a sharpie marker uh, to mark spots where you're going to make your holes in the cover, a nice sharp razor blade or an X-Acto knife. I use some fishing line. This is just 20 pound test fishing line and this nice long needle. And this was used to re-secure the wire that is inside of the seats. Uh, I used a revolving hole punch. This is very nice. It makes a nice circular hole. And when you have a nice circular hole like this, it's far less likely to rip than in a regular shaped hole or a slit. And this is kind of optional. I did use these. These are eyelets. And with these special pliers, you can crimp those around the holes that you punch and uh, just reinforce it a little bit and uh, make it look a little bit more professional. I also have a can of spray adhesive as well as a can of contact cement which is basically the same stuff that's in here I think with a brush to apply that. I use some white lithium grease, this is just to relubricate the sliders on the bottom. Some super glue and um, I used a bit of this nylon fabric here, it's kind of like a mesh. And when this was saturated with either of these adhesives, I could use it as a patch over the foam where I had a rip or a tear. Um, this is half inch polyfoam. I used this to pad the surfaces of the bolsters as well as the seat cushions. And you want a uh, metal coat hanger or any similar type of wire. And lastly, to attach the seat covers um, from the factory, they're attached with hog rings. I actually ended up using zip ties, and that is because I had a hard time finding upholstery hog rings locally. I did find these ones at a local hardware store, but these are not the type that are used for upholstery. These are a little bit too big, and they crush into a triangle as opposed to a smaller circle. So that's why I went with zip ties. Um, but if you do use hog rings, you'll want a set of hog ring pliers to, to crimp them with. It's basically uh, average looking pliers, but it has a small channel on each side to hold the ring. So these ones that I bought apparently um, are actual hog rings 
which farmers used to put into a pig's nose and they would just crush them through their septum like that to uh, keep them from rooting around in the ground so pretty brutal ask me how I know and a few more things I used which were not pictured here is a few gallons of distilled white vinegar and that was used to strip the rust off of the seat pans and I used some anti-rust spray paint to paint them with afterwards and just a metal brush to scrub them with and that's pretty much everything right there all right we'll start taking out this screw here and followed by these two screws here so these can kind of be a bitch sometimes to get off because they are glued on but if you clamp some vice grips like that it'll give you a spot where you can get some leverage and push it off like so <laughs> and with that panel out of the way we've got one more screw here and remove this panel all right with all that out of the way we've got four 14 millimeters uh, bolts two on the bottom two on the top and I re recommend removing this piece with the seat folded down that way there's no tension on this big spring and with these four taken out, the two halves of the seat can come apart. And there's the two halves separated. Ooh, score. Okay, I've disconnected this wire, which connects the two rails together so that they can both slide forward and backward together. And with the rails pushed all the way back, I can access these two 12 millimeter bolts. And with the rails slid all the way forward, I can access the two in the rear. And with the rails out of the way, it is now time to start snipping hog rings. These are what holds and stretches the seat cover down and attaches it to the seat pan. And with all those hog rings snipped and pulled out, we're now going to take the seat cover and kind of fold it down and turn it inside out and pull it around the other side. Or in my case, I guess I can pretty much just rip it right off, but that will expose another set of hog rings down in here, next to each bolster, and along the back. So pop those out, and this whole cover should come right off. So here is our seat pan separated from the foam. I noticed the passenger seat foam and pan are slightly different than the driver's side. Um, and it has this large indentation here in the foam and this large uh, metal piece that fills that in. I'm not sure why that's not there on the driver's side. Maybe to make it a little bit more comfortable. Who knows. But I'm taking this outside and I'm going to show you how to get all the rust off of it with a very, very minimal amount of effort. Okay, so here I've got a little wooden frame and I've just lined it with a trash bag. And I am going to place the seat pan in there. You can see everything's a little bit rusty because I already did my driver's pan in here and I have a few gallons of distilled white vinegar. Uh, just gonna fill it up in here and leave it to sit for about 24 hours and all that rust will just wipe right off. Okay, so I got a little over three gallons of vinegar in there and um, you can fill up the empty jugs afterwards with water and, and set them in there and that will displace the vinegar and raise the level up so you don't have to use so much. If you got any other rusty tools or metal or anything you want to take the rust off of, throw that in there too and that will bring it up. And so I'm just going to let this sit. I'm going to cover it up. And check back on it uh, tomorrow morning, I guess. All right, so I have the seat pan soaking outside in its vinegar bath. And with a stiff nylon brush, you should be able to get any of the rust transfer off of here that's transferred onto the foam. A wire brush is a little bit too much and it will tear the foam, but a heavy bristled nylon brush should do the trick. So this is what I did on my driver's side seat foam. These thin metal rods that run through there are what holds your hog rings in place 
and allows you to stretch the new seat cover over it. And um, both of them have been ripped out on my driver's seat, which is what allows the bolsters to become flat and saggy and, and the seat uh, skin is not tight. So what I did is glued them back in place and then using fishing line and this large needle here, I've run three lines on each side that are around the wire and over onto the back. And now here I've just got a piece of coat hanger and I will cut wire and it will be able to stay along the bottom there. And I will tie the fishing line onto that and there will be two rods holding everything in place, which should hopefully uh, make it that much stronger and less likely for those wires to be ripped out of the foam over time. This is some fabric I have left over from doing my door panels and uh, it's basically I think eighth inch thick foam. It's called headliner material or headliner fabric. Um, I purchased it at Joann's Fabric and I'm going to use it to line the bottom of the seat foam. So here's the bottom just covered with a layer. Of that headliner material. It conforms pretty easily to the bottom of the foam and you won't be able to see any of the yellow foam looking through the bottom of the seat pan. Um, you could call it an unnecessary step but I think it'll just make everything look that much cleaner and if any foam falls off the bottom of the seat uh, collecting down under there and uh, even if no one will ever see the bottom of my seat at least I'll know it's there and know that I did the best job I could do on it. So not a totally necessary step, but I still felt like doing it. I did it on the other one and it looks good. So it only took a few minutes. So now I'm going to show you how I added foam to the center of the seat and to the bolsters. And to do that, I'm going to be using this half inch foam. Here is some fabric. It's like a nylon mesh. Uh, very strong, very rugged stuff. I'm going to cut a strip of it and glue it over this crack in the bolster here. And it'll basically emulate what this tape is doing and hold the pieces of foam together a little bit better. So there's my little patch in place. I've let that dry for a bit, let the adhesive gas off and dry, and so I'm going to start attaching the foam to the bolsters.
here is all the foam I've added glued into place. I'm going to leave it for a bit so all that adhesive can gas off um, and dry properly. Um, I just used some of that nylon mesh fabric to cover up the seams where I used multiple pieces of foam. Um, and basically just by making pie cuts and things you can can wrap it around and contour it pretty nicely. Um, like I said too, this is very low density foam and it, it crushes and gets compacted easy. So these edges that are not absolutely perfect, it is not going to matter because it is not going to translate through. Um, this one turned out way better than this one and this one looks just fine. Nice, nice fat padded bolsters. And this one, like I said, this one was like probably twice as many pieces of foam. And uh, and this one turned it a lot better because it's the second time I've done it. But I'm pretty happy with this for now. And uh, the sea pan is still out soaking in the vinegar. So I am pretty much done with this bottom piece for now. All right, this is about 24 hours later. Here's the seat pan. Um, I did flip it over a few hours ago because my level of vinegar dropped down. Um, I might have had a small leak in my liner here. Um, but you can see the rust literally likes to wipe right off. So that was one light coat and then followed by two uh, heavier coats and then I did I guess kind of a third coat uh, just paying attention to areas with recesses and along the seams and underneath these hooks where the uh, hog rings will go. So here's my seat pan. The paint is all dry. Here is the foam and I'm just going to attach it to it with some spray adhesive. All right, so I'm now getting ready to put my zip ties in place. Um, instead of hog rings, I'm using these. And I find the easiest way to get them in there is uh, make a little hook on the tip. You do it with your pliers, and you can kind of just press it down and get that other end of it to pop up on the other side of the wire. And just use your pliers to pull them through. Okay, there's all my zip ties in place. I've got one, two, three, four, five up each side and one, two, three, four, five across the back. So now I am going to stretch the cover on and using a sharpie I am going to mark on it where I am going to have to make a hole to place an eyelet for the zip tie to go through. All right, now I'm going to use this revolving hole punch and punch a hole everywhere I made a mark. Uh, right across this piece does not have a wire in it. Um, you can see these sides have that uh, kind of a thick plastic in there uh, for the ring or the zip tie to go around. This does not, so I am just going to use a piece of leftover coat hanger wire I have and I will bend that into shape and run it through there before I punch the holes in it. Okay, 
I got all my holes punched and this makes a nice round hole which will be far less likely to rip than if you were to just cut a slit in it and this next step not 100% necessary but I like doing it because it's actually kind of fun and I've just got these little eyelets and a special set of pliers and what it allows you to do is to crimp an eyelet around that hole like so and that's where the the hog ring or zip tie will go and it just seems a lot more rugged and uh you know a little more professional After crimping these eyelets in, um, on some of these areas that are going to have a lot more tension put on them, I just like to put a little line of super glue around the inside there, and that'll make sure the fabric doesn't rip or tear anywhere. Uh, just a little extra precaution. So there's a few across the front, tightened down, and I'm now moving down to the sides and just kind of massaging everything along the bolster uh, to get everything where it ought to be and get everything nice and tight. And you can just start the zip ties, get it where you want, and then lock them down. This is what I've done on this back corner and added an extra eyelet. And uh, basically can just stitch those two parts and pull them nice and tight together. So here's everything tightened down and stretched onto the seat pan. Um, I kind of put some extra eyelets there on the corner so I can stitch those pieces together. Uh, this corner only did one. Um, up front, I left the tails on these zip ties um, on the front because when you snip the tails off it, uh, with these little snippers I've got it makes kind of a sharp little edge So I'm just imagining reaching under the seat and cutting my hand on one of those so I left The tails on the zip ties up front, but they're kind of nice and flush along the seat So the top of the seat still needs a little bit of massaging um, Just to get everything where you want it to be but uh, the bolsters are looking nice and tight. Pretty satisfied with it. Um, and the next step, we're going to bust out the old scalpel here. And we're going to cut some holes in it. So the first one is going to be right here. And you can see where you can be able to push that down. You can kind of feel where that's going to need to go. So I just make a small spot there with the Sharpie. Uh, you'll notice on the factory seat skins, uh, a lot more of it is cut out. Uh, it's really not necessary, I don't think. Um, this back one is exposed, so you don't have to do anything there. Um, just a small hole there to fit that bolt through is enough for this rail. And then on this side, we're going to have to make some cuts on the side of it, as well 
as one right there so make sure you have this stretched nice and tight and where you want it before you cut the two holes up front for the sliders for the rails on the bottom Okay, so I'm ready to attach my rails. My rails are in pretty good shape. Um, they just got a little bit of rust around where they bolt to the floor, not too bad. So I just cleaned them up with my nylon brush here and lubricated them. This stuff is really good for metal on metal contact. It's a white lithium grease. And uh, so I lubricated them up and putting them back on now. Now you can go ahead and reconnect this wire. Uh, just to make sure that each slider has the same number of teeth exposed up here. That way you'll know they're in alignment with each other. So this spot's pretty easy to tell where you're going to cut your hole. You can pretty much just line this piece up and you can feel it pretty easily through the fabric. Um, and it has an additional small hole right there. I'm just going to mark that dot with my Sharpie and punch a small hole there because I believe a screw goes through there and uh, instead of having it rub on the leather you can use your uh, your hole punch and make a little hole there So I'm about to move on to doing the upper portion of the seat. Um, this is pretty much all set. You put a few of the plastic pieces back on. I'm going to wait to put the, uh, the hinge back on until I'm done with this part. So when I stretch my dry receive fabric over, one stress point I noticed is right here on each side where the bolster fabric is connected to the center fabric. And... Um, those seams could be easy to split there, stretching it over. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit of preventative maintenance. And um, on the inside of that seam, I'm just going to apply a little super glue to the threads. And that will uh, keep that area from being stressed so much. And uh, less chance of a rip or a thread popping out or anything like that. got the cover pretty much stretched on where it's going to be and so I am going to punch a few holes in that piece there and put in some eyelets and those are the three points where it attaches below the headrest and you want to do those ones first so I've got this side bolster right where I want it I've got this line running nice and even down that corner so I am going to go ahead and punch my holes here, pop in my eyelets, and tighten down this side. And with that side tightened down, I'll then be able to pull mm -hmm. and stretch over this bolster and get the back of it nice and smooth. It's still a little wrinkly. continuing work here on the upper portion of the passenger seat and when I stretch this over the headrest um, it's still a little bit loose in some areas it's not really stretched tight over it 
So I have actually removed that piece. Uh, it's just four screws that hold it in. And these ones are covered up by these foam plugs and, and little plastic. Um, and what I'm going to do is cover this with a new layer of foam. Just using my uh, half inch green polyfoam here. And looking at this, I think it's just deteriorated with age and maybe not as, as thick or as it used to be. So I think another layer of foam will help. put the center cushion in. I've padded it additionally with that same half inch polyfoam and kind of beveled the edges um, to make it a little bit smoother when it's sitting in there. So I have these. These flaps are how it attaches. So I'm going to set it on top right about where it will sit and with my zip ties already in place, I will be able to see right about where it's going to be sitting and use that as a guide to mark where I will make my holes and put my eyelets. I really like how these eyelet pliers are self-aligning. Uh, makes it pretty much impossible to mess these up. Just slowly work it in there and be mindful of these two points here are kind of stress points. Before I stretch the cover on, I did put a little bit of super glue on those just to strengthen them up a little bit. So I've got this side in place and I've gone ahead and marked three holes, two that are on the flap and one on this piece. So I'm going to go ahead and punch those out. I think I will do something similar on this side. This flap is a little bit different. But pretty much same strategy.
loves the new seats? All right, so that's it for my Miata seat guide, how to reskin them. Uh, look at all this. I mean, this is awful. These are my old covers. Very glad to get these out of the car. Um, this wasn't too hard to do. Um, I had literally no experience doing this kind of stuff before, and I think I was able to do a good job. So definitely don't be scared to try it. And uh, like I said, under 300 bucks to do this. That is pretty awesome. And uh, please stay tuned because I got more interior stuff coming up. I'm going to be re my dashboard. And I've been doing a little sewing. And I'll show you how I made these badass quilted door panels. So stay tuned for more Miata content.